I hear the He's not looking at the, at the White House. He's looking at the church house. He's saying to the church, church, come on up into my face. Church, come on, rise up into me. Whatever you want to call it, that spirit filled where they believe in the gifts of the spirit, somewhere its roots come right back to good old California. Are you talking about the same California we know? Pull back that evil veil and reveal the California that I see. Welcome to God, Gold, and Glory, the California Contribution with Henry Fellaini. Today's program is dedicated to revealing California's special role as the world leader in spreading the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now with today's anointed message, here's Pastor Henry Fellaini. That's who we are, that's where we live, that is what California is. California literally has launched more international ministries than any place in the world. And uh, now one of the things the Lord showed me, and I want to share with you tonight, <clears throat> how many of y'all believe in prophetic symbolism? Amen. I got about six amens right there. Hallelujah. I tell people, if you don't believe in prophetic symbolisms, you better throw your Bible away. Because it's prophetic symbolisms from Genesis to Revelation, and in Revelation it kind of goes into overdrive. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> well, back in 2000, we started an all-night, 24-hour uh, uh, prayer time in our church in Mariposa, praying 24 hours one day a week. And it had taken us years to get churches together to do this, and I was so excited that we finally got it going that that first time I decided to stay down at the church the whole time, the whole 24 hours. There was a period of time down there, about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, I was there all by myself and laying at the altar and just praying and worshiping God, just there in his presence. And all of a sudden, I got this vision. And little did I know back then in 2000 that it would be almost the basis of this book and this message for the church for this age, for this time. But I saw the earth suspended in space. It's like a globe suspended in space. And I saw a light, and the light was in a spot, and it moved north, and then it moved west, and then it moved west again. And the thing about that vision was it was a timing thing in that vision. This light in the first place dwelt for a long time. In the second place, a long time, but a lot shorter than the first time. In the third place, it was there and dwelt a time, but then moved. And then the fourth place it got to, it exploded shafts of lightning all over the world. And God showed me that's the light of Christ that started off in the Holy Land in the Middle East and then moved north to Europe. And then most of us know the history. The, old, the, the light of Christ went dead in Europe and the old Church of England and all that stuff. And the pilgrims brought it across the Atlantic to the East Coast, which it was on the East Coast for like 200 years before the westward expansion. And then the westward expansion took place and the light of Christ came with it. And on a very short period of time, as soon as California was established, the West Coast was inhabited, immediately that Azusa Street Revival, which we've already talked about, exploded. And God showed me in that vision that that explosion was a shaz of light, if you will, the fires of Pentecost that God shot all over the world. And the key to that thing was once it got to California, how fast it happened. And he said, I want you to take that vision and call it California, a place of accelerated time on my clock. Now, the very thing that started California was something we call the gold rush. And gold rush is literally prophetic to this state. And God said, I want you to show the California. He said, I want you to show and reveal that word. That word went out on the Elijah list, went all over the world. I had prophets getting back to me about how it confirmed things in their spirit. But he said, California is a place of accelerated time on my clock. Now, if you know some of the history, California was foreign soil up until the middle of 1846. And in 1846, that Bear Flag Revolt started. And by January of 1847, the first treaty, the Capitulation de Coenga, was signed. And California was now American soil. And now, the, the, uh, California, this, this was in January of 1847. And there was a second treaty that was actually a surrender. And it was officially American soil, but the American government actually made a deal with the Mexican government 
and bought the whole Southwest on a treaty called Hidalgo Guadalupe, which was signed down in, in Mexico City in January of 1848. At the exact time that that treaty was signed in January of 1848 is when Marshall discovered gold here in California at Sutter's Mill. Somebody say coincidence, or what's that other word? Oh, Up until that time, there was a strong anti-expansionist spirit back in Washington that said it was too far to the West Coast to expand America to the West Coast. That old vision of the forefathers that America was to be a democratic, free Christian nation from sea to shining sea was getting great resistance until God was ready. And when God was ready, that first treaty was signed, and within months later, the second treaty was signed at exactly that same time. Marshall discovered gold, which, by the way, all the Indians and a lot of the Native Americans said was laying there in plain sight the whole time. But man couldn't see it until God had it settled that this was America from sea to shining sea. And as soon as that second treaty confirmed it, boom, the blinds came off, man could see the gold, and the world rushed in. And immediately California exploded in uh, population growth that exploded in finances. And in 1846, the first treaty was signed. 1840, uh, uh, 1846, the Bear Flag Revolt started. 1847, the first treaty was signed. 1848, the second treaty was signed. It's confirmed. 1848, gold was discovered. And by 1849, the world is rushing in. And by 1850, California has already become a state. It literally uh, skyrocketed into statehood. And the day California became a state, it was already shipping gold out the Golden Gate that was changing the economy of other nations. What most people don't realize, the Golden Gate was named 18 months before Marshall discovered gold. Fremont named that gate on January, excuse me, July the 1st, 1846, at the beginning of the Bear Flag Revolt. He didn't know anything about the gold in the gold fields. Nobody knew anything about the gold in the gold fields. God had that gate prophetically named. He named that gate for what he had planned for in the future. And it's by coincidence, the very, that gate isn't just a gate to San Francisco. Amen. Holy Ghost. That's the western gate to America. That's the western gate to the west coast of America. And that gate is prophetic to this state. Gold represents deity, doesn't it? Yeah. Represents purity, represents royalty. And that's exactly why the enemy has come to set up camp there. But that's exactly why he's given us the truth. And now we are speaking blessing towards that gate. Now we're calling forth that gate. We're doing prophetic decrees towards that gate. We're speaking the blessing over California. The church is rising up. We're coming up, uh, up into God's face. I'm here to tell you something. That gate is coming open in Jesus' name. It is the Golden Gate, and I, I see revival happening in San Francisco that's going to affect Modesto and everywhere else in this state. Somebody say amen. amen. But he said, I want you to take that vision and call it California, a place of accelerated time on my clock. Now, <clears throat> oh, there's a scripture over in Jeremiah 111, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit, but God said, Jerry, baby, what do you see? Y'all remember the scripture? Two of you in here remember it. This is when God was first doing a head number on Jeremiah and getting him to step out into his prophetic ministry and all that. And he said, Jerry, what do you see? Jerry said, I see the branch of an almond tree. God said, you have well seen. He said, now I'll hasten my word to perform it. Very interesting. So what's that got to do with California? Have you seen any almond trees around here? <laughs> By coincidence, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. what Jeremiah saw where God said, I'll hasten my word to perform it, happens to be the place that grows all the almonds for America. By coincidence, Holy Ghost. we're also the place that he hastened his word to perform it. We don't grow most of the almonds. We don't grow a lot of almonds. We grow 100% of the almonds for America 
80% of the almonds for the entire globe come right out of California. Coincidence? Now God said, now I'll hasten my word to perform it, and California has boomed right into leadership. Do you realize California's been leading the world for over 100 years in all kinds of realms, all kinds of areas? I mean, we ship food to 156 nations. We feed half of America its vegetables and fruits. We ship rice to the Orient. Did you know that? <laughs> we ship rice to the Orient. It's literally the land of milk and honey. California has been leading for 100 years, and we don't have a building in this state outside of the missions that you could put a plaque on that's 200 years old. That's how fast God shot California to the top. We, we're here, we just kind of think, well, it's just always been this way. But I'm here to tell you, it hasn't been this way that long. 100 years ago, 106 years ago, this, that's when God used this state to change the whole world. And God has been just literally exploding with California. We lead the world in agriculture. We lead the world in technology. We lead the world in the spiritual things. Somebody say amen. amen. We lead the world in the media. We lead the world in entertainment. We lead the world in all kinds of stuff, not just the sin. Hello. And he said, Jerry, baby, what do you see? He said, I see the branch of an almond tree. God says, you've well seen. Now I'll hasten my word to perform it. And the thing about the almond, the prophetic symbolism of an almond is the almond represents the watchman on the wall, the first to call forth. You know, the almond trees, you guys know this, you live around here, they don't wait for spring to bloom. They actually bloom in February. And they bloom the whole month of February. They're first to come forth to call forth a new season. And the, 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 the prophetic term for the almond is speedy fulfillment. Coincidence? The other prophetic symbolism or the other definition for the almond is leadership. There was a time back there in the Old Testament when Korah and his bunch got stupid with Moses. You remember that? And I can't think of a better word than stupid. They challenged Moses and his leadership, started whining, somebody got real mad, the earth opened up, swallowed a bunch of them whole, right into hell. They'd have been real fortunate had it just been Moses that got mad. But God got furious with that. And he told Moses, he said, I want you to go get 12 rods, one from each tribe of the tribes of Israel, bring them down to the church house, which was the old wilderness tabernacle, put them in there, leave them overnight, come back in the morning, and there'll be a sign, and it'll tell you who's leader. When Moses went in there, he pulled out those 12 rods, and one of them was different. One of them budded. What did it bud? What did that indicate? Leadership. That's God telling all of Israel, that budded almond, that rod that budded almonds speaks that I gave leadership to Aaron and Moses. Thank you very much. Hello. It also reconfirmed speedy fulfillment because it leafed out, branched out, produced an almond, and ripened overnight. Coincidence? Then over in Zechariah 4, Zechariah said, Lord, I see two olive trees, one on each side of the golden lampstand, pouring the golden oil through the golden pipes into the golden lampstand. You all remember that verse? Pouring the golden oil through the golden pipes. He sees two olive trees, one on each side. What does that oil represent? What does olive oil represent? Holy Ghost, anointing, Holy Ghost power, right? So if it's pouring the golden oil through the golden pipes into the lampstand to produce the light, what do those two trees represent? I heard Chuck Messler teaching on this one time on TV, and he said something, and I grabbed a hold of it. He said, those two trees represent the unlimited supply of the anointing. So what's that got to do with California? Have you seen any olive trees around here? Do you happen to know where the olive capital of the world is? Jesus. Corning, California. 
I've got to put the giddy up on this. You just gave me the 10-minute notice. Ooh, hallelujah. Anyway, by coincidence, a place that, that grows the, the olive capital of the world produces what represents the power and a move of the Holy Spirit is in California. There's another verse over in, in Isaiah 65, 8. Isaiah, it says, the new wine is found in the cluster. Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. The new wine. How many of y'all know we grow a little bit of wine around here? <laughs> we live in a town that has, actually has the largest winery on the planet. Yeah. Right here. It is prophetic. They don't know anything about it, but we do. Yeah. What does the new wine represent? Uh. The presence of Jesus. The intoxicating yeah. presence of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, California grows right at 90% of the wine for all of America and grapes. And it... it, it uh, is America is the largest market in the world. So we grow like 90% of the wine for the largest market in the world, which is America. Coincidence? <laughs> Father Sarah that declared California is the vineyard of the Lord. We not only have the vineyard, but the vineyard represents fruitfulness. We produce the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, and the new wine, which is the presence poured out to the world. I talked about the Golden Gate. And there's more. The, uh, he said, I'll restore the corn, oil, and the wine. Corn represents grain in the Bible. It really means grain, which is corn, oats, barley, rice, and all that. We are huge exporters of that. But what I like about that, that's Joel chapter 2 is what Peter was quoting in Acts chapter 2 when he said, this is that. And that's exactly what we have, have some claim to here in California because California is Latter-day Pentecost to the world. And it just be by coincidence, oh, yeah. we're a leader in corn, we're a leader in wine, and a leader in oil. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Lord. Hallelujah. And then we're the golden state. It just so happens that gold is our backbone. The mother load, which is a mile and a half wide and 120 miles long, which is the quartz ledge that bears the gold in California, is if you look at a map, it's literally the backbone of the state. We not only have the gold of his glory, but the gold, the mother load itself, is the backbone of California. We're literally sitting on all the geologists and the commercial miners will tell you 90% of the gold that was ever there is still there. God said the gold is mine and the silver is mine. He, that's when he said the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. He's connected the two. He saved it for the last days. Trillions of dollars of gold are in the ground. We produce more food with a land of milk, even though they're trying to tell us we're going broke. Huh. If you ever seen a spiritual battle, that's it. We're literally the land of milk and honey, the most food, the most wealth, and our backbone is gold. The enemy's trying to lie to us, but I'm telling you, God said, if my people. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Now, i got to get to that. How much time do I got? Six and a half minutes. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. All right, Gracie and I live in Mariposa. Mariposa is right in the heart of California. Yosemite National Park. How many of y'all heard of Yosemite? You know about Yosemite. Yosemite, this is the mother of prophetic symbolism. There's a whole bunch of others, but for the sake of time, I can't get to them. I've got to do this one. Mariposa is in the center. The center stake of the state is right there, about 30 miles from town, a little town of North Fork which means Yosemite National Park is in the heart of California. According to the National Park Service, Yosemite is the highest concentration of high waterfalls in the world. That speaks of outpourings. Very interesting. Those outpourings, those rivers, or those falls, pour into a river that flows out of Yosemite Valley called the Merced River. In Spanish, it means river of mercy. Come on, somebody shout it out. The highest concentration of waterfalls on the planet feed the river of mercy, which flows out of the heart of California. Coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. And then there was a, an event that took place in Yosemite starting in 1871 that uh, became known as the Yosemite Firefalls. How many of y'all ever heard of the Yosemite Firefalls? People don't realize how prophetic that was. It was extremely entertaining. It actually became so popular 
that it became more popular than Yosemite itself. More people were coming to Yosemite for the fire falls than to see the park. And uh, it started in 1871, and the last fire falls took place in 1968. It was actually its popularity became its demise because of jamming the park, the people were trampling the meadows. Excuse me, it took them hours to unravel the traffic after it was over. Park Service finally stopped it. We're all wishing they'd started again, but it doesn't look likely. But anyway, the way the fire falls took place, Camp Curry, which is right at the base of Glacier Point, was right at the, right at the base of the steep cliffs that go 3,200 feet up to Glacier Point. And Paul Curry, way back in 1871, got the idea of going up on top of Glacier Point building a huge fire up there late in the afternoon till it burnt down to a big pile of glowing coals so that at dark they could push it off and cause a river of fire to come off of Glacier Point. And they did that to try to attract people because way back in 1871 it was very remote and hard to get to. And it worked. And people started coming. And it literally, literally tens of thousands of people by the time it got into the 1950s, 60s and in there. <clears throat> Tens of thousands of people were lined up every night in Yosemite for the fire falls. And the way the fire falls took place was right there at Camp Curry. They had an outdoor uh, um, uh, entertainment thing. They had an outdoor show, family show. And they had marimba players and singers and all that to start at 8 o'clock. And it built suspense up until 9 o'clock. And at 9 o'clock, every night during the summer, the main event took place, which was the fire falls. And there was Hugh Hauser in California's Gold, if you've ever seen that program, actually did a documentary and went and got the old timers and had them come and interviewed them on site. This is where I got a hold of it, where I found out how spiritual this was. I'd actually been to it as a kid, but I didn't realize then how prophetic it was. Because the old timer that was the caller, like uh, he's like in his 70s or so now, but it was back when he was like in his 30s or 40s, he said that when this took place, it was so spiritual that they knew it had something to do with church. He said that literally grown men would cry during the fire falls. While he was giving this testimony, there at the interview, he had to stop and get his composure because he started to cry. And Hugh Hauser said, my God, I'm starting to cry myself just hearing you talk 30 years after the last one. What I'm telling you is there was so much anointing on that thing that even the secular people knew it had something to do with the spirit. And the way that fire falls took place, the caller, once the thing was ready, it was dark, it was 9 o'clock, fire was ready up on top, the man at the bottom would holler up to Glacier, the guy at the top would holler back Curry, and then the call took place. Now, the meadows are jammed with people from the nations from all tongues and walks. Everybody's eyes are riveted straight up. There's actually a scripture in Daniel se chapter 7 that talks about the ish fiery flame issues and comes forth from before him. And thousands upon tens of thousands ministered unto him. This is so prophetic, it's incredible. Here's man standing on the banks of the river of mercy in the heart of California. Amidst the greatest outpourings on the planet, with the nations gathered with their eyes riveted straight up, all there for the same purpose. And he makes the call, let the fire fall. And the man at the top answers the same words every time, the fire is falling. And the glowing coals start pouring over. And I'm here to tell you, my Bible says we have a God that answers by fire. Amen? Amen? Can we stand up right now? Can we do that prophetic call right here in Modesto right now? Do it all together? Now, I'm going to say it, but I add one word to it. I add the word Lord. That work with you? Yeah. And we're going to say it together. And remember, the Bible says you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, and light shall shine upon your ways. So we're decreeing right now. And I decree right now, if you'll say this after me, Lord, Lord let, let the fire fall. fall. And his answer coming from his heart of compassion is, the fire is falling. Come on, give him a shout. Give him a praise.
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, the dead will bring my love. We have a God that answers by fire. He is an all-consuming fire. He's a fire from his loins up and his loins down. On the day of Pentecost, it was cloven tongues like as a fire. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you for tuning in today to a special presentation of God, Gold, and Glory, the California Contribution with Henry Fellaini. It's our hope and prayer that today's program has inspired and revealed to you God's special role for California in this end time harvest. To order today's message on DVD, CD, or the book, God, Gold, and Glory, along with other materials, please go to our website, www.godgoldandglory.com. That web address again is www.godgoldandglory.com. Folks, Henry and I hope you're blessed by this powerful message. Everywhere we share it, people are encouraged and stirred. And I love it when they come to us after our meetings and tell us how their hearts have been set on fire and lives changed after hearing the message or reading the book. I really believe my husband has been commissioned by the Lord to pull back the veil and reveal God's mighty plan for the Golden State. We are so impassioned to get this message to as many viewers as possible, and that's where we need your help. I'm asking you to pray and seriously consider giving a generous contribution to this ministry. We need help to get this enlightening and uplifting message to the multitudes. There are several easy ways to give your tax-deductible contributions. Simply see our website at God, Gold, and A -N -D Glory. That's GodGoldAndGlory.com. Also, if you want to contact us to come and release this message at your church or group, that information is in our website. Now, on behalf of God, Gold, and Glory Ministries, Pastor Henry and myself, we speak God's richest blessings upon your lives. And thank you so very much for your support. Did you know that California leads the nation that leads the world in the end time harvest? Did you also know that many major moves of God started in California? Did you know further that California's greatest days are yet to come? God, Gold, and Glory, a book by Henry Fellaini, will open your eyes to California's contribution to global outpourings and the end time harvest. As you read this book, you'll discover God's mighty hand in the early history of California, how California's natural features reveal God's plans, California's apostolic mantle as the global leader in worldwide ministries, the prophecies confirming California as an end time revival leader, how you can help bring California and the world into its prophetic destiny. God, Gold, and Glory is available to you now by visiting our website, GodGoldAndGlory.com. That address is GodGoldAndGlory.com. It's time to pull back the veil and discover that California is truly God's country.